Lord has brought us together on Christmas Eve. And I know you must love Jesus to come out in this weather. Hello. So we're just gonna we just rebuke all of your sinuses and all your sneezing and everything else right now in the name of Jesus. So have clear lungs to sing and to worship, and your neighbor won't be afraid to get close to you. Hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, I only have one announcement uh, this morning, and that's unusual. Uh, but anyway, uh, so all the beautiful decorations have to come down on January the 5th. So I'm sorry. And so uh, there's a sign-up sheet outside to help take it down. So thank you to all of you that helped put up the decorations. So on January the 5th, we need you to sign up to take them back down. Uh, I see an usher coming around handing out candles. We're gonna have a, this is our candlelight service later on, so make sure you have a candle. Also, if you are new this morning, welcome to our church. Uh, we have visitors bags for you. And so, uh, all three gate members, make sure there's a visitor that, that they get one. So we have bags for um, the uh, the men and the women, and then the uh, children. If I need to make more, I, I can. So that, that's not a problem, but welcome to our services. Uh, also, on the back of the chairs, and they show in the first row, there's a maroon card with lines on it. Uh, one section is your information, so we can reach out to you if you're new. The back side of that is a prayer request. So even if you don't want to fill out your information, we want you to, even if you don't, fill out the back side. We have a group that prays weekly. So give us your prayer request. We are a praying church, and we'll make sure that we pray for you. Amen? Yeah. All right. The Tyndall family is ready. They're going to start us off uh, with the lighting of the Advent. And so so we're gonna, they're going to take it away. Once God's plan was a mystery, hidden from our sight. Now God has disclosed what has kept secret for so long. He has brought it out in the light. In the brighter light on this fourth Sunday in Advent, may we see more clearly the glory of God in Christ and sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim the uh, faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm is as firm as the heavens. Light four candles, see them glow brightly, so that all may know how four candles shone the way, making our darkness bright as God's day. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Let us pray. On this Christmas Eve, be with us and all our loved ones, Lord. Let us be present in each moment today and eyes open to the sides of your love all around us. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiving. For Jesus' sake, amen. Amen. Many, many, many. So, first of all, do you all have a bulletin? All right, then. Now we get to take part uh, as a community in uh, Holy Communion. Or if you're from another faith, the Lord's Supper. Uh, so, I invite you all just to prepare your hearts and minds to partake the Lord's Supper. Christ invites all to his table. Uh, if you have heart against anyone right now, just take a few seconds and just ask God to forgive you and to prepare your heart for this experience. It's a blessing anytime you do it, but it's also, I think, an extra blessing when it's Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. So let us proceed. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who truly love him, who earnestly repent of their sin who dwell in clarity and charity with their neighbors and intend to live a holy life. 
draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, making your humble confession to Almighty God, let us pray. Almighty God, most merciful God, we confess and lament that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with your, our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We are truly sorry that we humbly repent because of the remembrance of our sin is more than we can bear. Have mercy on us and forgive us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Pardon us all. great mercy, our almighty God and heavenly Father has promised forgiveness of sins to all who repent and with true faith turn to him. May he have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these comforting words, that Jesus Christ our Savior says to all who truly turn to him, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. As a forgiven and reconciled people, let us extend signs of peace one to another. Stand and greet those around you in the name of the Lord. joy to give thanks to you in all places and at all times, Almighty Father. You are the source of all truth, life, and love. You made us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When in our sinfulness we turned away from you and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and call us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Therefore, we praise you with the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, forever singing this hymn to the glory of your name. Jesus Christ to the world. Your spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn, to proclaim freedom for captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the year of the Lord's favor. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once and for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trapping hell and Satan under his feet. And as our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we may come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, receiving these gifts of bread and wine with thanksgiving for the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for us the body and blood of Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and partake of his most blessed body and blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one as your church that Christ may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all thing, things in subjection under your Christ and gather us together with all your saints in the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. We ask this through your Son, who with you in the Holy Spirit in your holy church be all glory, honor, and glory now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for you. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. gifts of God for the people of God. Let us take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. So we're going to ask the communion stewards to come up and partake of the Lord's Supper first. We're also going to ask the altar ministers, all of you that are going to uh, 
give altar ministry today, but you can also come up with the communion stewards. And so as you altar ministers, as you take the communion, please go and line up along the wall. So if you need prayer during communion, the prayer team are going to make themselves available to you.
Beautiful church. Deborah, can you cut some lights on for a second? There's a lot of red out there this morning. It looks great. Now, I just want y'all to know I do have a tie. As any of y'all ever wonder. We're so, you look, so many of you look so great this morning. You know, I'm always thankful for old Joseph and how he dresses and looks so nice, but i got to tell you, Joseph Champlin is upstage today. <laughs> Popeye, stand up. <laughs> You're looking good, man. Come on, let's stand together and worship the king.
shepherds, why they a jubilee? Why a joyous strains prolong? What the glad song tidings bring? Rich inspire your heavenly song. Sing to 
celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, we light the, the Christ candle today. And so this morning, Joseph Chandler Jr. and his family are coming to uh, give us this portion of our devotional. Thank you. Go ahead. The season for watching and waiting is over. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. This is the light of the world, and the darkness cannot extinguish it. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the people. Psalm 96, 1 to 3. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the people. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord of glory do his name. Bring an offering and come unto his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Psalm 96, 79. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Psalm I'm filled with 
has come to make you new. This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby walked where angels trod, and when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God, Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the deaf heaven's perfect land that the sleeping child you're holding is the
question right here at this time of the year. And, uh, why, why did Jesus come? Why did he come? We talked last week about nine of the major theological answers that have been posited by theologians through the last several hundred years as to why Jesus came. And many of them had scriptural foundations, of course, as they're studying the scripture. Well, this is why Jesus came. And this is why Jesus came. And, and interestingly enough, um, the church has managed to kind of divide itself through the years uh, depending on which reason they gravitate to. Um, if they believe that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, then certainly uh, that becomes a major proponent, a major theme in the life of that particular body of believers. That, uh, Christ came to, to set everybody free, and he did. Christ came to destroy the works of the devil, and he did. And he does, and he can, and he will. But there are a lot of reasons why Jesus came. And as we've been talking about sin for the last several months, one of the main reasons he came was to save us sinners. We needed a Savior. We needed to be saved from our own sinful condition. We are not well. When we are born into this world, we are born spiritually dead spiritually uh, encouched and encased in sin. It is a main impetus for us. It is, it is how we go through life. It is really, in effect, what it amounts to is uh, you go back to the garden where Satan tempted Eve and said, did, did God say you can't eat uh, any of the, the trees in the, in the garden? And she said, well, no, we, we we not only cannot, you know, eat of this one, but we can't even touch it. See, she added to it. God never said that. He said, just don't eat of this tree. You've got everything else, just don't eat of this one. And the Bible says she took of that fruit and she ate and she gave to her husband and he ate. And they both sinned in that. So every, every person since Adam and Eve have been born with a sinful predisposition to sin. I, I don't like that in me. I hope you don't like that in you. I hope that that disappoints you. Because I know I'm disappointed when I catch myself in a sin and I, I go, oh man, oh, reminds me of that commercial several years ago about the V8. <laughs> You know, the guy, instead of, you know, getting a soft drink, oh, I could have had a V8. You know, and I, I just, I feel like hitting myself and going, I could have had the victory in Jesus' name. I didn't have to do that. So we give ourselves a headache throughout the day. I mean, try this sometime. I just had a thought. Just hit yourself in the head every time you sin throughout the day. See how woozy you get by the end of the day. You come home and say, what? Well, how did it work go today, honey? Uh, pretty good. I only sinned 832 times. <laughs> and then if you get home and say, well, I didn't sin once, then knock yourself out. You're a liar. <laughs> Jesus came to save sinners. Every single one of us qualified as a sinner. There's only one saint that I know of today sitting in this church. Well, actually, she's not here today. I don't know where she is. Saint Della is not here today. <laughs> she's so gracious, but she talked. I, I, I commended her for her godliness one time, and she said, Pastor, I just need to correct you about something. I sinned. I was shocked. I could not believe it. <laughs> Precious woman, you can't tell me you sinned. Good night. It's one of the reasons Jesus came. Well, in your bulletin, you see on the front cover, you see four uh, more reasons. We covered nine last week. We're covering four this week. And if you would, I'm going to read all four of these. And in honor of the reading of the Word of 
God, would you stand and let's read these four passages of Scripture. And I'll just read them straight through. God's Word says this, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their gifts, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be seated, please. Why did Jesus come? When Solomon built the temple and they were dedicating the temple, it was built with a, a purpose, an express purpose that God himself, the very presence of God, would come and tabernacle among his people. And he would occupy that temple that place of worship where he would be adored forevermore. And it was his, his uh, abode on earth, if you will. We cannot imagine what the abode of God is up in the third heaven. It's, it's beyond our imagination to comprehend the beauty and the majesty. Uh, John the Revelator tried. He said, man, that you know, the, everything's like glass and everything shimmers and shines and and there's gold everywhere, and pearls, and, and uh, it's just so beautiful, it's hardly, uh, it hardly, it, it defies description. And yet this temple was to be occupied by the very presence of the word of, of God himself. And when they dedicated on that day, the Bible says that the, God's presence came down, and so filled the temple that no one could stand up. None of the Levites and the priests that were there offering sacrifice and offering worship and prayer and, and Solomon himself, they could not stand in the presence of the manifest glory of God. And they fell and they worshiped the Lord. It's like a cloud came in and enveloped the place. That is a description, friends, of the glory of God. One of the reasons that Jesus came was to manifest the glory of God. So that somehow, you and I, in the clay vessels that we live in, somehow can have a sense of the presence of God among us. And in this place, and we can, we can feel the weight, the heaviness, of the presence of God. And when that happens, glory has been imparted to the people in that moment. There's a good book that I read once that said that we're to praise until the spirit of worship comes and then we're to worship until the glory falls. I don't know about you, but I, I don't know how many times you have experienced the manifest glory of God in the midst of his people. If you ever have, you, you, you don't want to leave it, you can't describe it. And the thing that I, what, what baffles me about the manifest presence of God is you can't, you can't put it in an order of worship. You can't program it. You can't say, okay, well, now here's the time when God's going to show up. You ready? No. It, it is a sovereign move of His Holy Spirit. And when it happens, don't 
Throw away your clocks. Throw away the bulletins. Throw away every... Just throw the music on the ground. Just drop the mic. Just fall before the presence of God and let His glory envelop you and change you. And, you know, when um, Moses went up on the mountain and talked with God face to face and was there with the manifest presence of God, he came down off the mountain. Everybody was scared of him because he was glowing with the glory of God. One of the reasons that Jesus came is so that you and I would be able to experience the glory of God. He said, we have seen his glory, glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John said, we saw this. We saw his glory. You remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, they went up and Jesus was transfigured before. He somehow, when he did his humiliation, his, his uh, becoming humble and taking on the form of a bond servant, taking on the form of flesh, that he uh, was somehow veiled. That's why I love the words of that hymn. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate deity. He was veiled, but on that Mount of Transfiguration, the veil was open. It was, it was removed, it was pulled back, and they saw the glory of God in Jesus Christ. And they were changed. Friends, listen. One of the reasons Jesus came was to manifest his glory to you. And because he can manifest it to you, you and I can be changed. We can be different. I don't have to be that ornery, selfish, hard, and thank you, Judy. <laughs> I'd have been jumping up and 
down and screaming and shouting hallelujah. I love to worship the Lord. And in fact, when we started going there, this was a, uh, th again, this was a hard time for me and Carol. Our church, our church was going to call a new pastor. And I was on the worship staff. And, and they called the whole staff in and they said, we're getting a new pastor. And he wants to bring his own staff. And all y'all are going to have to leave. And I'm like, well, I moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico to come here to this church. What am I supposed to do? And so I, I knew this much. We had to go to church the next Sunday, whether we had a place or not. We we're going to go to church. We're going to continue to worship the Lord. That's, that's the difference between someone who is the hired help who gets a paycheck to go to church. And when the paycheck stops, so do their attendance. Right. See, I'm, I'm preaching to a bunch of preachers that, that, that uh, they're not in the house. We get upset with the church. We, you know, I ain't going back. I'm not going back anymore. I just, I don't like that. I don't like that. So we showed up at Dr. Brown's church there. And, oh man, the worship was so good. Carol and I sat, we sat on the first row, just like she does now. We're right in front of the pulpit. And man, the music started, and we're on our feet, we're, our hands are in the air, we're smiling, we're clapping. And, and it was about the second or third song into it, Joseph, before I realized there's something, something's going on here. And I stopped and I turned around and everybody in that church was going. <laughs> Who are these crazy people on the first row? Clapping and shouting and standing. We were the only two standing in the church. It was a great church. It was a great church, and God's people were blessed by the teaching and preaching of God's Word and the music. It's just they didn't express it in the same way. Their worship was different. Their worship was different. I'm sure how the shepherds worshiped was different than how the three kings worshiped. If there were three kings. Jesus came for us to lavish Him with worship and with praise, to experience His glory, but... The scripture also said that he came. The angel said, listen, I'm bringing you good news of uh, a little joy. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to bring a little joy into your life today. Smile at somebody and just, you know, have a nice day. Give a smiley face. No, the angel said, fear not. Fear not. I can't even tell you how many fears there are that we all experience day in, day out. Well, I'm afraid what they're going to think. I'm afraid what they're going to say. I'm afraid to go to work. I'm afraid to get in the car. I'm afraid to go to the store. Of course, we, we went to the store yesterday. That was a big mistake. <laughs> I'm afraid to get out here on the highway. I'm, a, I'm afraid to you know, we're so afraid all the time. The angel says, fear not, don't be afraid. Stop being afraid of cat. And instead, understand that there's good news, friends. Listen, there's great joy. Great joy. Great joy. We used to sing the goofiest little song in youth group. You know, and it, and it was again, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart.
Lord. They're away from the Lord. And one of the, invariably the conversation always, uh, you know, kind of moves sort of back. Well, I, now don't get, please don't misunderstand me. You're going to get so mad at me what I'm fixing to say. Y'all are going to leave and say, boy, that, I'm, I'm never going back to that church again. <laughs> but listen. Then, God uses doctors. God uses medicine. I am not anti-medicine. I am not anti-doctor. But let me tell you something. This person has walked away from the Lord. And they're miserable. And they're having to go to counseling to try and work out their problems. And they're having to take uh, mood-altering medications. To, and I'm not saying we, there, there's, a, there's a complexity complexity to what I'm telling you. And, and don't you think, don't you even think for a moment that if you're on some kind of medication or, or seeing some kind of therapist that that's bad. It's not. It's what is needed. But sometimes, sometimes, when you walk away from Jesus, when you turn your back on God and say, I'm not going to follow him anymore, I'm not going to listen to him anymore, I'm not going to study his word, I'm not going to fellowship with his people anymore, I'm just not going to do it. Sometimes, that's the perfect opportunity for those feelings to come in. That defeat can come into your life. And you struggle with that. I tell you, sometimes we are our own worst enemy. We are our own worst enemy. Now having said that, let me say this quickly. Yeah. Let me tell you quickly. When I was part of the previous denomination, we had available to us in our medical care, our, our good medical insurance that we had, we had available to us counseling. And I can't even tell you how many times I almost picked up the phone and called and said, I need some help, man. I need somebody to talk to. I need some kind of something to help me sleep at night because my brain is blowing up. I got real close. Because if you pass her through COVID, you pass her through some hellacious times. You're wondering, is anybody ever going to come back to church? Or we're going to have worship again. How, how are we going to do this? And then you passed her through a denominational split. Oh, that's fun. Oh, let me tell you, what a joy. I mean, one episode, you're going through COVID and all that stuff. Get the shot. Don't get the shot. Wear the mask. Don't wear the mask. You wear the mask, I'm leaving. You don't wear the mask, I'm leaving. Everybody's leaving. And they ain't getting on a jet plane. They're just leaving. Some haven't come back yet. <laughs> and I can't tell you, man, I, my joy has been, my joy has been low, 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 low. Because there just really hasn't been a whole lot of externals that would cause me to say, Whitney, I'm having a blast. <laughs> this is just great. Jesus came to bring joy, great joy. I can't wait to have a joy episode again sometime soon. <laughs> I, I really think one of the reasons why many years ago, and I, I, I lived through it, y'all lived through it, some of y'all lived through it, but I think one of the reasons that the laughter revival came through the church was to allow people to begin to experience the joy of the Lord that they had not experienced or had forgotten to experience. And it, and it was the craziest time 
to be in the church and to be part of the leadership team where you, you're, you're up there and you're, excuse me, I got to, hang on. on the praise team and you're up there trying to play and you're laughing so hard you can't hardly stand up. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all looking at me like, huh? Great joy. And finally, finally, listen friends, oh my gracious me. Jesus came to be that wonderful counselor, that mighty God, the everlasting Father. Now, some of you theologians in training, you're going, wait a minute, I thought Jesus was the Son, how can he be the Father? You're confusing me, what chapter do I need to turn to to read about that? Here's what you need to understand about the Hebrew in this, and the understanding of it. What it means is that Jesus is the Father of eternity. Do you know that Nothing that is made that has been made was not made without Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ is the creative agent. When God said, in the beginning God created, you read 1 John and it says, all things were created by him and for him and through him. Jesus is the word who made everything. So he's the father of it is the father of eternity, the father of everything that is everlasting, and he's the Prince of Peace. This morning, I pray that as you uh, enjoy this beautiful Christmas Eve, and you enjoy Christmas Day tomorrow, I pray y'all just, listen, if you haven't laughed in a while, just put some goofy, put Mr. Bean on or something. <laughs> or, or watch a, you know, watch something that'll make you laugh. Even if it's just one grunt. Uh, do something. Laugh and have a good time and enjoy each other. And worship the Lord. It's not about the presence and the gifts. It's about Jesus. And dare I say, would you and I even consider possibly getting some time during these days of, of contemplation of the Lord's coming, maybe there would be some time where you could just get in the presence of God and say, God, I know I'm not worthy. I know I'm not worthy. But Lord, I want to pray like Moses prayed when he said, Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory, Lord. Reveal yourself to me. Oh, that that the manifest weight of his presence would come into your life and tabernacle so that when people see you, they see you radiating the peace of God and the love of God. That's what I want. Lord, I need that. I need that today. We worship you today in spirit and in truth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Join me as we continue to worship the Lord and sing a few Christmas carols.
about church? Would.
Thank you. 